For almost 20 years now, Miami football fans have been tortured by watching average teams, which is a hard adjustment for longtime Hurricane fans. However, there's one person who can turn this all around, and his name is Tyler Van Dyke. The sophomore QB has shown flashes of greatness, and today, we'll see if he can bring an ACC championship, a Heisman Trophy, and a national championship to Miami. Picking up where we're at in real life, the Hurricanes had to beat Pitt if they wanted to make a bowl game, and this was Tyler Van Dyke's first game back from injury. He missed most of his sophomore year because of a hurt shoulder, but he was back now, and he was still struggling to get back into a consistent rhythm so Miami would lose and miss a bowl game. However, after a fantastic offseason, he was ready to start his junior year and prove that he played for the better Miami team. Sometimes, Tyler Van Dyke still struggled to hit his target, which meant he had a long way to go if he wanted to make the NFL. But unlike the result of the Middle Tennessee game the year before, Miami actually took down a smaller school starting the season with a win and giving fans some Hope. There was almost nobody in attendance at Temple, and for a good reason, because Tyler Van Dyke decided to go off this game. He couldn't be stopped as he threw for six touchdowns, but that success could be short-lived. Tyler Van Dyke had to play against number five, Texas A&M, and the Hurricane offensive line decided not to show up. However, he persevered through it all and threw this deep ball 55 yards in the air, hitting junior wide receiver Keyshawn Smith in stride for an incredible 89-yard touchdown. Unfortunately, that wouldn't matter. Like normal, Miami fans would build up a ton of hope, all for it to come crumbling down in the end with a six-point loss. The Hurricane defense blew the game, but Tyler Van Dyke had no time to be sad because he had to open up ACC conference play against undefeated Louisville. Unfortunately, he wouldn't be out there long as he got hurt on this play, and the story of Tyler Van Dyke's career so far seemed to be an injury battle. But at least he got to watch his team beat the Cardinals at the last second, and after a bye week, he was back he was able to start the game with an easy touchdown run, and even though Tyler Van Dyke wasn't the best quarterback every so often, he made plays that stunned the whole crowd. He ended up giving Boston College's defense all sorts of issues which helped the Hurricanes beat their rivals. Florida State always claims that they're back, but this season it might actually be true for once as they are undefeated and ranked in the top 10 of the AP poll. Unfortunately, Tyler Van Dyke got hurt again, so he had to watch from the sidelines as quarterback Jake Garcia came for his job and got the Hurricanes into the top 25. Since Jake Garcia pulled off the big win and was injury prone, Tyler Van Dyke would need to play amazingly against Virginia to stay QB1. And that's precisely what he came out and did. Miami football was actually good again, and there was no way that our success was going to slow down against a basketball school. Tyler Van Dyke absolutely torched the Blue Devils, and even though it was a little closer than expected, we picked up another win, putting us two games ahead in our division. If Tyler Van Dyke could take down Georgia Tech, we would secure our spot in the ACC Championship and he started the game off throwing a ton of dots. The Hurricane offense was thriving, and the only issue is we still had the worst pass protection in the country, which is why every game was so much closer than it should be. Obviously, we shouldn't be in overtime against Georgia Tech, but that's just how things seem to go. Luckily for Tyler Van Dyke, his defense got a stop, and he thread the needle so the Hurricanes could escape on top. And the following week, I couldn't believe my eyes as Tyler Van Dyke opened up the game with a 55-yard bomb on the Virginia Tech defense. It's safe to say he had one of the best arms in college football as well because he made deep balls look like the easiest throws to make in the world. And I'm confident that next year he'll be in the Heisman race because he was starting to dominate. This was the last difficult matchup of the year and Tyler Van Dyke wasn't off to a good start with the offense looking more dysfunctional than ever. By the third quarter, we trailed the Tar Heels by 13 and even when Tyler Van Dyke delivered a deep throw perfectly on the money, it was simply dropped in a wasted play. That was until he finally found a receiver that could catch, with sophomore Romello Bronson mossing the North Carolina defender and getting him in the record books. With 75 seconds left, Tyler Van Dyke needed to keep us alive by picking up the first down, but nobody was open and it ended like this. Drake May ruined some kid's Christmas, and this game against Pitt didn't matter. We had already secured the conference, so Tyler Van Dyke just dotted them up for fun, finishing 
finishing with four touchdowns. But now, it was time for the big game, and winning an ACC championship wasn't the only dream that Tyler Van Dyke had. Ever since he was a kid, he always loved the idea of creating his own video game, which is something that I can relate to. I've always wished that I had the knowledge and experience to create a video game while using those skills to make it a career, but until I heard of today's video sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University, I didn't know it was an actual possibility. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country, with over 200 degree programs focused on getting you started or advancing in a career you love. For example, in their game development program, you'll learn computer programming languages, how to create realistic and dynamic gameplay experiences with AI, and much more. There's also no set class times, which allows you to work when and where you want. They'll let you transfer up to 90 credits towards your bachelor's degree and up to 12 credits for your master's. So if you're ready to switch to a career you love, go to snhu.edu slash Bordeaux, or you could also use the first link in my description to learn more. Now it's time to play in the ACC Championship, and it was against our in-state rivals. Tyler Van Dyke started it off by finding junior wide receiver Michael Redding III, and he continued to feed him throughout the game as he took this one 33 yards to the house untouched. With seconds left in the first half, we kept it within three, but by the end of the game, our offense simply couldn't keep up with the Seminoles. Florida State put up 51 on our defense, and Tyler Van Dyke was ready to get into his senior year, but he had to get through the Peach Bowl first, which was against number five, South Carolina, and he made sure not to disappoint throwing lasers throughout the game. This performance had fans thrilled to see what next year had in store as Miami finished 11-3, which was their best record since 2003. Tyler Van Dyke got up to a 99 overall in the offseason, and the Hurricanes were projected to be a top 10 team with a potential Heisman winning quarterback, but it wouldn't be an easy start to the year. Well, at least I thought it wouldn't. Tyler Van Dyke couldn't be stopped and I couldn't believe how quiet the swamp was by halftime. We already had a 24-point lead, which was enough to destroy the Gators, and the following week, Ball State never stood a chance with Tyler Van Dyke playing like this. He was dotting up the Cardinals throughout the entire game, and this team could legitimately make a playoff run. Tyler Van Dyke was carrying the Hurricanes, but all of a sudden, when he played at Louisville, he started to struggle, as he wasn't able to hook up with his receivers the same way he had in previous weeks. Fortunately, the Miami running game was also solid, so they were able to take over the offense and keep us on track to stay undefeated. It wasn't pretty, but this fumble resulted in the go-ahead touchdown, and we survived at Louisville. However, I quickly realized against Wake Forest that nobody was going to give us an easy win this season, as they all wanted to ruin our run, and Tyler Van Dyke was not handling the pressure well as he continued to make bad reads. Luckily for him, running back Henry Parrish decided that he was going going to take over, and the performance he had to get us the win was remarkable. But after back-to-back -back bad games, Tyler Van Dyke needed to bounce back at number 16, Notre Dame, and he started it off on fire, giving the Hurricanes a 14-point lead. By the end of the third quarter, it was clear that we'd continue our undefeated streak, and Tyler Van Dyke had fully redeemed himself. He wanted to get back into the Heisman race because he was worried that if he didn't, he wouldn't make the NFL. In the third quarter, it was a very tight battle, but then our offense kicked it up a notch, and we won another rain game, keeping us at the top of our division in the ACC. The following week on the road at Duke, Tyler Van Dyke finally started dropping bombs again, connecting with wide receiver Xavier Restrepo for an 83-yard stunner like it was nothing, and breaking the school record for career passing touchdowns. Later in the game, he would set another hurricane record as well as he put up seven touchdowns with ease. These stats made Miami fans cream, but it was time to focus up as we were hosting undefeated number six Florida State, and this was going to be another tough battle in the rainy state of Florida. With a minute left in the half, we took a lead, and it was a good thing our defense was doing a great job because Tyler Van Dyke managed to get hurt, and we were still able to beat our rivals, which made us number one in the polls. I was a little surprised that Georgia Tech was ranked and had one loss, but that wasn't going to be for long. Tyler Van Dyke had to keep raising his draft stock with amazing performances, and a Heisman could still be 
be on the table as he got the Hurricanes their ninth win. Virginia Tech shouldn't give us any issues because the Hokies hadn't had a good season so far, and Tyler Van Dyke enjoyed getting to sit back and comfortably throw lasers all afternoon as he finished with five touchdowns. It was time to battle for the division, and if number 16 North Carolina beat us today, they would knock us out of the ACC championship, so we had to win. But by midway through the second quarter, Drake May already had three touchdowns on us, and the North Carolina defense was locking us up. Van Dyke's offensive line was completely selling, which meant by the second half, we needed to somehow have a miracle comeback on the Tar Heels. However, our offense couldn't keep up with Drake May, and this loss hurt more than ever, but at least we could still make the playoffs. Pitt shouldn't give us any issues to end the regular season, and Tyler Van Dyke continued to set school records as he now had the most passing yards by Miami QB. He left the stadium beating the Panthers, but he wouldn't get to play in the ACC championship so he was relieved to see that the Hurricanes made the playoffs. Georgia was the semifinal matchup, and Tyler Van Dyke put us on the board first. But he got a concussion at the same time, so he had to watch from the sidelines in confusion as the Hurricanes blew their chance to finally get back to the national championship game. Backup quarterback Jake Garcia clearly wasn't the solution for the future, and that was definitely not how I expected it to end. Unfortunately, that was it for Tyler Van Dyke's college career, but since he had set numerous records at Miami, he would end up getting drafted in the third round to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 